humanity has been wiped out. Steps were taken so we could start anew, but things didn't go according to plan. Welcome to Summed Up, the series where I take a game or piece of game media, surround it and then give it back to you. In this one, I go over Rage. The giant meteor Apophis is hurling towards Earth and nothing can stop it. So humanity created the Eden Project. Advanced ships called Arcs were created and stored underground with humans inside in suspended animation. Stasis. So they could reawaken years later and repopulate the planet. Humanity may just live to see another day. 106 years later, due to an outside disturbance, the systems of Arc 437A were compromised and all of the cryogenic chambers lost except one. When Nicholas Rain goes outside, he is attacked by some bandits that are almost immediately shot. In the distance, Dan Hagar tells Rain to get in his buggy. On their way to his home, Hagar tells him that he's lucky he's the one that found him. Arc survivors are worth a lot of money to whoever hands them over to the authority. Back at his place, Hagar tells Rain that he's kept himself alive because he's managed to stay out of trouble, but helping him may have changed that. So he needs Rain to go over to the bandit's hideout and wipe them out so they don't come to his home searching for blood and the survivor. After Rain does that, along with a couple more favors for Hagar to repay saving him when he emerged from his arc, Hagar tells him that as much as he'd like to keep him around, their time together has come to an end. He'll attract too much attention and that'll bring the authority down on them. Before he leaves for good though, Hagar asks him one last favor. He wants Rain to go to the nearby town of Wellspring to ask Mayor Clayton for some supplies. Over at Wellspring, Mayor Clayton tells Rain that Hagar must really trust him if he sent him on such an important mission, so he will too for now. But if Rain's going to stay in town, he's going to have to change out of his arc suit and into something more modern. He sticks out like a sore thumb and will bring the authority sniffing around. With that last favor done for Hagar, Rain sticks around Wellspring for a while working for Mayor Clayton and Sheriff Black. One day, the mayor sends him to get some feltrite, a material that came from the Apophis, that some bandits have been refining north of Wellspring. After he obtains the feltrite, the mayor sends Rain to talk to Dr. Kavasir so he can test it. Kavasir takes an interest in Rain and scans him. He points out that Rain has a lot of little computers running around inside of him. He goes on to say that he hadn't seen a survivor since his days working for the authority in the city, and that Rain doesn't know how lucky he is that he hasn't been caught by them. If he doesn't have anything of use to them, they'll kill him. There are those who fight against them though, Kavasir continues, the resistance, and maybe Rain can be of use to them. When Rain returns to the mayor with Kavasir's findings, the well alarm goes off and the mayor asks him to check it out for him. Rain talks to Karasen, the well manager. He tells him that bandits have broken into the well and brought with them a toxin to poison the water supply. If something isn't done, they'll poison the entire town. Once the bandits are taken care of, Rain takes the toxin back to Karasen, who tells him to take it to Kavasir so he can figure out what it is. Over at Kavasir's lab, a light bulb goes off in the old scientist's head and he uses the toxin in order to finish building a weapon that he was working on for the resistance. The doctor then asks Rain to take the weapon to Elizabeth Cadence, a resistance member over at the Wellspring Bar. After he finds her, Elizabeth asks him to go on a mission for her since he hasn't aligned himself with the authority. Captain Marshall, the resistance leader, has been captured by the authority and is being held in a prison close by. She wants Rain to go and break the captain out. And so, he breaks into the prison and breaks out the captain. They meet back up in the resistance base under the Wellspring Bar. There, the captain tells Rain that because of what happened in the prison, the authority will be looking for him and they'll know he's an Ark survivor and he doesn't want to fall into their hands. Whether he likes it or not, he's part of the resistance now. The captain goes on to tell him that his ID drive must still be in his Ark. It's a device that has key information about the Ark program, each with a different piece of the whole. Because of this, the Resistance and the Authority are in a race to get as many as they can. He must get his ID drive to the Resistance before it falls into Authority hands. Rain returns with the drive, but now the Authority is hot on his trail and have surveillance all over Wellspring. The Captain tells him to go to the Dead City to check out the Authority's old research facility and see if he can find proof of their experiments with the mutants that plagued the Wastelands. The survivor gets the data and returns to Wellspring. There, the captain tells him that it's not safe for him there any longer and they have to move to the Resistance main base. On their way to the base, the captain tells him that he's glad he decided to join them. Ever since his arc emerged, all the captain knows is fighting the authority. For once, the government had a good plan in place, but General Cross changed the timing of the emergence of arcs with his people in them and in doing so, he changed the course of human history. 
at the base, Elizabeth tells Ring that the mutants aren't caused by radiation after the meteor strike. Instead, they were created by the Authority through experimentation with humans. All of the failures were discarded and thrown into the wastelands. As they spread and reproduce, what is known as mutants were formed. Once Lazar, the Resistance tech expert, is able to decrypt Rain's ID drive, they find that in it are the locations, codes, and re-entry times of every arc that was buried. The captain wants to use the information to free every arc that the Authority has kept trapped underground. Now, Rain must infiltrate Capital Prime, the Authority's main city, and get to the arc control system to upload the data from his ID drive, which will trigger the emergence of the remaining arcs. If he succeeds, the Resistance has their people in place, ready to support all those who emerge from the arcs. Inside the city, Rain finds that the Authority has found a way to control and weaponize the mutants. After fighting through hordes of mutants and Authority soldiers, he finally makes his way to the control system and uploads the data. The signal is then sent out, up to the satellites and around the world, and sure enough, all of the arcs still buried under the Earth begin to emerge. The course of humanity's history may be changed yet again. What do you guys think about one lone soldier thrown into a whole new world and tasked with saving it? I thought it was a bit much for him, but Rain managed. Click that like button if you liked the video, subscribe if you really liked it, and share the video, it really helps out the channel. Follow me on Twitter for updates, the link is in the description. As always, this is Lord Loxus summed up, and I'll see you next time.